Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2014 Duke Economics graduation ceremony. It's great to be here today with you all to celebrate both a happy Mother's Day and the, the graduation of our undergraduate, master's, and PhD graduates from the economics department this year. It's become, it's become traditional at Duke to, to have graduation at the same, on the same day as Mother's Day. And I think it, it helps to highlight the special, the special, that special blend helps us to really appreciate all that goes into today. So we're here today to celebrate our graduates, but I also want to celebrate the mothers, the fathers, the grandmothers, the grandfathers who've, who've sacrificed uh, and done a great deal to help our, help our students be here today. So let me start by, by asking for a round of applause for our mothers and for our parents and grandparents. Today is a great day for our, for our graduates and their families. It's also a great day for us as faculty here at Duke, where we get the chance to celebrate the accomplishments of our students and our graduates. Ultimately, it's really the ability to come here and, and work with all of you that makes this a special place to be a professor. And so it's really as much a celebration for us as it is, as it is for all of you. I'd like to begin the ceremony today by introducing our honorary faculty speaker. Each year, our department honors a faculty member who's made great contributions, extraordinary contributions, really, to, to teaching and mentoring here at Duke by selecting that person to speak here at the, at the ceremony and say, share a few words with you. This year, it's my great pleasure to introduce Roy Weintraub as our 2014 faculty honoree. Roy joined our faculty in 1970, soon after receiving his PhD from the University of Pennsylvania. And over, over his long career here at Duke, Roy has been continually recognized for his outstanding teaching. He's won university-wide teaching prizes. Every year, the department chair at Duke, we get, a, we get an email from the deans, kind of a dean's list for our faculty, uh, saying who, who is in the top 5% of all teachers within the university. And every year that I've been chair, Roy's name has been on that list. He essentially gets perfect teaching evaluations for all of his courses. He inspires his students. Simply put, he's one of the most outstanding teachers we've had here at Duke. Roy's leadership in the university goes well beyond his teaching, though. Over the years, he's had so many, held so many positions at Duke that it's way, way too many for me to name here. But let me just give you a few. He was the director of graduate studies in our department for over a decade. He was the department chair. He's been the dean of, the, of arts and science, the faculty here at Duke. He's been the chair of the Academic Council, which is our faculty senate, on multiple occasions. And he's held many positions in the provost office uh, and the dean's office. You know, graduation is an event where we celebrate, celebrate our students. And one of the things about, about the event is we, we're really wishing our students well and success as they go forward in their lives uh, and their careers. You know, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a constant changing and momentum to these processes, and we wish our students well. But part of what makes a place like Duke great are the people who really are here for the long run and really lead this place over, over many decades. And so over the past four decades, Roy has been one of the great leaders we've had here at Duke and certainly one of the greatest leaders we've had in our department. And so it's my pleasure to welcome him here as the honorary speaker today. New graduates, families and friends of our new graduates, and colleagues. Today, the Economics Department honors those who have earned graduate degrees. We honor those who have graduated with distinction. We thus honor those who have excelled in their academic work in the Department of Economics. I'm here to honor the rest of you. You know who you are. You're back there. You've graduated with a degree in economics from an important research university, but you certainly don't want to become an economist. 
you found your way to economics either by choice or accident. You took courses you liked or didn't like, but you graduated nonetheless. I took one economics course as an undergraduate in 1960. I received a grade of C+. I was so un unenthused about economics that I didn't take any economics courses in my mathematics graduate program. I didn't understand as an undergraduate what those economics teachers and textbooks were trying to accomplish. We saw no equations. We were never given any problem sets. We read about and were lectured about lots of economic concepts and issues, yet we were not shown how to argue or how controversies were to be settled. Around that time, though, economists at research universities began arguing differently, though the faculty at my small liberal arts college didn't seem to know about it. For much of my own recent career as an historian, I've been trying to understand and write about that post-war transformation of economics. Economists began in those years trying to convince one another by using quantitative evidence and formal models. Theory and econometrics became rhetorically essential. Factual evidence was to be constructed along lines that the theories suggested and economic models were to be modified to accord with the evidence. The evidence and the theories were thus intertwined and mutually stabilized. Economics was becoming what Keynes had always hoped it would become when he wrote, if economists could manage to get themselves thought of as humble, competent people, on a level with dentists, that would be splendid. Today, economists agree on most things. This may come as a surprise to those of you who watch television. Economists also degree, disagree on many things, like whether soccer or basketball is more exciting, whether snow is or is not a total nuisance, and whether Elvis is or is not alive and living in Carborough. But most economists agree on how to get answers to particular economic questions. I'm not qualified to speak about other areas of human discourse but I'm sufficiently well-read to know that there is no upper limit on the amount of rubbish written and spoken about economics. Almost everyone has an opinion about almost every economic issue, but almost none of those opinions are evidence-based. As my friend Barbara Hernstein Smith has put it, in the confrontation of belief with evidence, belief is no pushover. Economists honor the distinction between normative and positive economics, and in positive economics, evidence shapes belief. The writer Ernest Hemingway, when once asked what was the most important trait that a writer had to have, answered, a built-in crap detector. Years later, the American educator Neil Postman took Hemingway's comment and wrote extensively about how the goal of a liberal arts education should be to help students develop their own crap detectors. To this end, we faculty members have tried to teach you how economists think, reason, and argue. In your classes, you've worked problems, constructed models, and appraised evidence. That's how you learn to think clearly about economic phenomena. That's how you learned how to use evidence to accept or reject claims about the phenomena. That's how you learned to argue like an economist. We've tried to engage you in our process of thinking and reasoning about economic issues. For almost all of you, this was your first chance to so engage. And this will be, for most of you perhaps, your last chance. For as Keynes remarked in the grand peroration of his 1936 general theory of employment, interest, and money, there are not many who are influenced by new theories after they are 25 or 30 years of age. You have a few years left. Use wisely and with good purpose your knowledge that evidence is required to construct a good economic argument. After employing this knowledge for a few years, it'll become a real habit. But then you'll turn 30. Go forth, graduates, and stamp out economic ignorance. 
Remember, friends don't let friends talk economic nonsense. Hi, my name is uh, Tom Nekiva. I'm the director of EcoTeach here. And I'm here to, of course, wish everyone a happy Mother's Day, or as it's known in my house, the day that Daddy wears a dress. <laughs> One of my daughters is here with me today, and she told me that I look like mustard. <laughs> um, I actually typically don't have much to do at these graduation ceremonies other than to enjoy them as I watch, but I stand here today in place of my colleague, Kurt Taylor, who is the director of the PhD program, uh, to address the PhD students. Uh, Kurt and I compared our gowns, and clearly I won, and therefore, I'm, actually, he had to be at a family affair today. And so I'm here to just channel Kurt uh, for a minute and uh, then to shake your hands as you receive your PhDs. Um, I think Kurt often says that the PhD students are why a lot of us, a lot of us on the faculty come to work every day and to, to nurture the relationship that we have with you to become colleagues co-authors, and yes, lifelong friends. It, I know that in that first year when you were going through your first year classes, it did not seem like we were the kinds of people capable of friendship. Um, perhaps now that you've just gone through your PhD dissertation defenses, it still doesn't quite seem like it. But we are, and we hope that you'll continue to make us proud as you have uh, over the years that you've been here with the extraordinary placements in the academic and the private market that you obtained this year. It's a true honor to have you as colleagues and friends. So I'm happy to conclude here between two ferns and um, move the ceremony along and have you come up and join me on stage as your name is called uh, to congratulate you on your extraordinary accomplishment. So please join me in congratulating our PhDs. Ryan Brown. <laughs> Benjamin Carlson. <laughs> Gabrielle Farfan. Felix Phone. <laughs> Domenico Ferraro. <laughs> Christoph Kleiner. Chung-Ying Lee. <laughs> Lala Ma. <laughs> Don Kwan O. Oh. Deborah Tammy Rowe. <laughs> Teresa Foy Romano.
Yair Taylor. <laughs> Gift Chutima Tanta Rorongsa. Andre Velasquez Guijo. Eric Vogt. Wenjing Wang. And Laiju. Well, good morning. And again, happy Mother's Day. I'm speaking on behalf of Kent Kimbrough and the master's program. My name is Charles Becker. <clears throat> the master's program is, I guess anyone in the, who's completed the master's program has failed to heed all of Professor Weintraub's warnings about going on for a graduate degree and has committed to making the world a more economics-friendly place. And at the same time, master's students are not quite the same as the doctoral students, although I'm very proud that four of those graduating with PhDs today came through our master's program. Master's, with master's students are just a little more interesting We're able to take chances and call out people who are slightly different. And as I look around through I mean, virtually everyone, as I'm looking over there at Maha Raymond, who I think pestered me like crazy from Pakistan when she was decided she wanted to come to the United States, got calls from all over the place. From, from just a random, random sort of people doing interesting things. And these are the people who emerged amazingly successfully. We will be recognizing several of them with notes for excellence as teaching assistants, for excellence in research. But sort of to typify the master's students, we we're recognizing two in particular who have struggled through the program, who, well, not struggled negatively, but struggled like everybody else, who I think typify the program. The first, who I'll be calling up momentarily, I got this email a couple years ago from some guy saying, you know, I'm sick of Afghanistan. And furthermore, the army thinks I've done enough. Do you think there might be a place here at Duke for me? And it just so happened that I knew his advisor, uh, his undergraduate advisor back in Colorado. And she wrote and said, yeah, take this guy. Well, we're very happy we did. Um, Danny Schaffer. just a little east of where Danny was. We also got this, another email from a young woman saying, I come from a small city in China and I didn't go to dot, dot, dot university where all of your other Chinese students come from. But you might look at me anyway because I'm really, really energetic and interesting person. And besides, my hometown is almost as beautiful as Durham. Well, I knew she was exaggerating when she said that. <laughs> but again, 
a fascinating person. She's won all kinds of awards as a superb teaching assistant. She's off to a PhD program at Cornell, Xiaolu Wang. And now, there's too many other people. I could stand here and recognize them all, but then, they were, then we wouldn't have undergraduates graduating, and they'd have to come back for a fifth, or in some cases, sixth year, and that would be a bad idea. So let me ask Emma Raciel to call the names of the other distinguished class of 2014. Tatiana Zitseva. <laughs> Ling Mai Haguen. <laughs> Felipe Soleil. <laughs> Yanfitri Pakpahan. Jin Chi, Donggun Lee, Dohun Kim, Pong Sukorn Tsuan Pong. Andrew Sa, <laughs> Sungbon Nam, <laughs> Maha Raymond, <laughs> Xiao Lu. Yiwan Gao. <laughs> Chu Hong Yin. Go back again. <laughs> Daniel Schaefer. <laughs> Renyong Zhang. Ming Fun. Get your order right, Chris. Fei Zan. Xiaoyu Wang. Ker Jin. Frank Ziachi Lee. <laughs> Jessica Lavoice. <laughs> Selma Mansour. <laughs> Anastasia Bogdanova. John Sias, <laughs> Marius Kohlberg Ring, <laughs> Yanyu Chen, <laughs> Tian Chao Tone. Nan Shia (Applause) 
Jian Huang. Xiaojing Zhuan. Yui Chao. Ching Tian. Joanna Tahada. Alexandra Hecker. Jamila Nigmatulina. Fancy Fan Bui. Robert Moore. Sheldon Ma. Fan Yang. Yu Xia. Yijia Li. Ying Guo. Rui Chen. Kangxin Kim. Renyong Zhang. Congratulations again to the Masters and Masters in Statistical Science and Economics class of 2014. You're going to introduce. Good morning. My name is Connell Follenkamp. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Studies here in the Economics Department. And it is my great pleasure to introduce our undergraduate student speaker for this year's commencement. Uh, Maddie, if you would start coming to the podium so I can embarrass you on your way up. Maddie McElway is uh, not a student I actually had in class, but I did get to work with her very closely on a number of scholarship applications, and so I got to know her fairly well. And I can say that I am truly impressed by the fact that her academic achievement is driven by a genuine and sincere concern for others in the work that she does. And she's been a very impressive young woman. She is, uh, and, I, and this is no exaggeration to say that she is one of not only the top graduating economic students, but one of the top graduating seniors from Duke this year. She was selected as uh, an honorable mention in the Faculty Scholar Award, which basically put her in the top dozen or so students at Duke. She's on her way this fall to start the PhD program in economics at MIT. And I would just say this, uh, quote, give, give a quote from one of her undergraduate thesis advisors who says, Maddie stands out in terms of her intellectual maturity, maturity, her commitment to learning, her capacity to absorb new concepts, and her ability to articulate complex ideas in clear, accessible ways. She is destined to be a stunning success. No pressure. Please welcome Maddie McElway. Thank you, Professor Fullenkamp. There is a sort of panic students feel when we receive an email from a professor. I'm talking about how we feel when we receive an email from Duncan Thomas. 
saying that another 208 problem set is due. Or how we feel when we receive an email from Kurt Taylor, notifying us that his exam will indeed be cumulative. Or how we feel when we read an email from Emma Raziel, reminding us that the deadline for the Barclays competition is fast approaching. Or how we feel after reading an email from Michelle Connolly or Erica Field, scheduling a 10-minute thesis meeting that will then require 10 hours of preparation. I experienced another one of these minor panics 13 days ago when I got an email from Fullencamp asking me to be the student speaker at graduation. I didn't panic because I feared speaking in public or even because I dreaded a few more late nights, late nights in Perkins. I panicked because I had no idea what I would talk about. At age 21, I have few life lessons to impart. You would be better off turning to a meaningful book or to a trusted advisor for words of advice and inspiration than to me. But if there's any sort of talk I know how to deliver, it's a talk to convince people why economics matters. We have all had to convince ourselves that the challenges that come with studying economics are worth tackling. That the time spent surviving multivariable calculus and econometrics, navigating the job recruitment process, and of course, learning the difference between soci and soci psych would be worth it. Those of us who have taught, TA'd, or tutored economics have had the opportunity to convince others to overcome these obstacles. In recent weeks, I've even had to convince my parents, who are naturally worried that I won't have a job next year or ever, that five more years of schooling in economics is worth it. So while it would be silly for me to attempt to advise you about your futures after Duke, I may be able to convince or remind you that economics matters, that studying economics has and will add value to your daily life. Before I begin, I must thank a group of economics students who provided me with reflections on how studying economics has changed the way they think. I wanted to get a representative sample of econ undergrads, so like any good empiricist, I just surveyed my closest friends. Many of, myself, many of us, myself included, entered our first economics classes with the goal of gaining an understanding of the stock market. Even a blogger for The Economist admits that, and I quote, only frat boys who want to be bankers take economics. The real intellectuals major in more academic subjects. But we leave intro econ not knowing much more about the stock market. We leave, this, we leave with something more valuable, a framework for thinking critically about the world. You see, economics is, at its heart, the study of choice. In micro, we learn that people choose. We spend countless hours mastering constrained optimization and learning to pronounce the name Lagrange so that we can acquire a framework for understanding how decisions are made. These hours do more than eliminate any obligation we might have felt to stay in a movie theater during a bad movie. They impose a discipline on how we make decisions of our own, a tendency to identify assumptions underlying behavior, and the ability to pinpoint careless decision-making. In macro, we study the choices of nation states. One senior I surveyed described macroeconomics as witchcraft. <laughs> but all jokes aside, there is something extraordinary about a framework that allows us to think critically about national and international events without necessarily being clouded by political ideology. Then in metrics, we acquire the tools that allow us to observe choices. Another student I surveyed described the use of econometric analysis to test economic hypotheses as exciting. That student has yet to take econometrics. <laughs> but I hope that the rest of us who have taken the class instinctively question any stochastic claim we hear, identify assumptions underlying the claim, and employ the tools necessary to evaluate the claim's validity. And finally, in our elective courses, we learn to apply the choice framework. We replace all of those Greek letters with variables that mean something to us as human beings. And once we have done these substitutions, 
we can answer questions from realms of life as diverse as industry, trade, poverty, and finance. Or is it finance? Anyhow, the reason that economics matters is that it gives us the tools to answer these questions. Our answers can then be used to guide behaviors, institutions, policies, and more generally to improve human lives. So as we move forward, we must continue to think critically about decisions and claims that we make or hear. We must remember to update our preferences and choices as we make mistakes. We must seek solutions to questions whose answers can improve human lives. And we must be proud, not just to have a degree from Duke, but to have a degree in economics. On behalf of the class of 2014, I would like to thank our professors, not just for teaching, but also for mentoring us. Professors, I hope you know that the time you invest in us, both in and out of the classroom, is deeply appreciated. Family and friends, thank you for giving us the support that has allowed us to succeed. And graduates, congratulations and good luck. Maddie may be only 21, but when I grow up, I want to be just like her. <laughs> My name is Michelle Connolly. I'm the director of the Honors Program. Uh, every year, I have a bit of a conflict at home because my kids want to take me to brunch and all these other nice things. But it's also great for me to be able to spend Mother's Day with students that I consider my own kids for at least a year or two. The students who are coming up now are students who have completed an honors thesis. This is a process that takes a good year, sometimes more, involves a lot of tears, a lot of struggling, usually on my part. Um, but in the end, I'm thrilled with the result. I hope the students are. And if you look at any of the posters, you'll see the amazing quality of the work that our students have done. Professor Connell Fullenkamp will help me to award uh, the awards in graduation with distinction. First is for Jordan Gracie for distinction in research. Sean Choi, distinction in economics. Taylor Smith Dennison Elliott. Aki Carolyn Ishikawa. Ishwant, it only took me about two months to figure out how to improperly, probably still pronounce his name, Ishwant Kandimala. Anisha Kimlani. Gang Lee. Derek Joseph Lindsay. Michael Robert Potts. Raj Singh. Jitin Solanki. David Shudang Wang.
I'm happy he has a shoe on. He's been in a cast for a few weeks. Helena Hailin Wu. Lucy Yin. Hong Zhu. Now we have the group who not only finished their honors thesis and were awarded distinction, but they were given high distinction. Nicholas Joaquim Axum. Andrew Evan DiDonato. Gabrielle Therese Inder. Thank you. Do I take this? No. Okay, well then. Okay, then. <laughs> Rebecca loved me so much she took my class three, no, four times. Rebecca Yiquan Lee. Kelsey Irene Simon. Lynn Hall Vander Vandendrish. Joseph Patrick Yetter rhymes with better. This gentleman has not only won high distinction, but was also awarded the best honors thesis prize and is off to Stanford University, I believe, for his PhD next year. Alexander Wyatt Blodell. Mr. Christian Anthony Brito has won high distinction and the Student's Choice Award for Outstanding Honors Poster. <laughs> Ms. Dana Elizabeth Fenis Fenster was received, has received high distinction and was a finalist for our Best Honors Thesis. This one's going to take a while. Richard Phillips Hogan III received high distinction, was a finalist for our best honors thesis, and second place for outstanding symposium presentation. <laughs> Lucas Alexander Hubbard has received high distinction, the Student Choice Award for honors poster, outstanding honors poster. Madeline Dab Dabinet McElway, high distinction, finalist, best honors thesis, faculty choice, outstanding honors poster, first place, outstanding symposium presentation. <laughs> Add what you want. Mr. Evan Meyer, high distinction, finalist for best honors thesis, second place, outstanding symposium presentation. <laughs> Mr. Winston Haynes Riddick, High Distinction Student Choice Award, Outstanding Honors Poster. <laughs> At this point, if I could have the remaining graduate, um, undergraduate students start lining up. And I just want to, again, congratulate these wonderful students I've had and benefited from and learned from. Thank you.
Pyonpyon Lee Adelson. Esther Haiji Jun. Laura Jean McLaughlin. Michael Asarov. Robert Dolot. Garrett Kingman. Joel Andrew Seuss. Adlin Koo. Yi Hong Pu. Christine Kim. Daniel Sungwon Jung. Dawe Liu. Catherine Ni. Nee. Mariah Ostreich. Katie Schneider. Yifon Zhang. Michael James Elgart. Gordon Allen Fierce. Ashok Palanapian. Alexander Satius Wedmore. Vanessa Floyd. Noel Brianna Cunningham. <laughs> Carrie Ann Fernandez. <laughs> William Beckman. <laughs> Stephen Matthews Gasparini. Judson Grant McNatt. Peter David Lawton. Edward Shamilov. Menren Deng. Yi Pan. Christian Alexander Kreb. Catherine Bodak. Melanie Liza Green. Claire Noel Kudenholt. Lisa Wang.
Gabrielle Ware. <laughs> Dong Chan Kim. <laughs> Bertie Barukas. <laughs> Daniel Choi. Prabhanjan Didwania. <laughs> Andres Davinino. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Cecilia Jew. <laughs> Timothy Patrick Weber. Billy Marsden. Jonathan Wilkins. Leka Badavuku. Rami Korshad. James Philip Ronald Sego. <laughs> Bernard Anthony Koish. <laughs> Zachary Chartash. John Spitzer. <laughs> Matthew Pooning Lee. <laughs> William Pang Hang Johnson. <laughs> Alexander Sonajeri. Ian Michael Hall. Vikas Kotamasu. Brian Cuccinelli. Jeffrey Joseph Wong. John Dai Yang. <laughs> Justin Leader. <laughs> Sachin Mitra. <laughs> no, it's fine. John Lenny Srinivasan. Shiv Parikh. Yeah. Emma Etheridge. Yeah. Antonio de Oliveira. Yeah. John Ford Morris. Andrew Bennett Varney. Jake William Huff. Joseph Michael Foyetti. Tyler Robert Bramson.
Andrew Barron. Russell Tamaki Busher. Froze Jamil. John Kunane. Philini Chandrasekhara. Shannon Marie Sims. Emily Highland. Jay Prashant Bishan. Andrew Michael Evancho, Jr. Wild Bill Paul Chen. Constance Dang. Ernesto Trollson. Justin Edward Granit. Steven Saldana. Andrea G. Won Lee. Hanung Lee. Quang Meng. Singhai Ching. Su Bin Li. Mert Guven. Lunchon Wang. Sean Aaron Clark. Sanket Prabhu. Kevin Joseph Trainer. John Farrell Camera. David Richard Barry. David James Shaughnessy. Richard Edward Herbst. Edward Stansky. James Fitzgerald Sinclair. Sarah Aniela Rowland. Shelby Melissa Weiss. Brooke Skinner. Joseph Benuto. Nathaniel James Keating. David Liu. Jintek O. Oh.
Jong Hyun Bae. Suk Han Yi. Pray T. Taylor Knight. Why you lie? Michael Minho Im. Danish Rashid Hassan. Keshav Mahendru. Gerard Clark. Edwin Chen. Brian Yip. Timothy Landon Evans. Kristen Cole. Alex Kim. Stephanie Downey. Yui Shing. Sankar Kandasami. Zinia Ramirez. Stephen Chen. Kevin Junwei Chu. Samantha Kirsten Ko. Jaron Chang. Terry Jerome Otley, Jr. <laughs> Melissa Regalia. <laughs> Margaret Carruthers. <laughs> Kensley Brooke Elliott. Christopher Scott Taylor. Quan Bing Su. Flannery Zhu. Samuel David Brunel. Ryan Bardak. Irina Dunescu. Colin Beasley. Jackie Yan Ding. Cameron Agraz. Bridget Francis Meany.
Misha von Derek Aikman. Stephen Harris Blazer. Kanya Mirillo. Alexandra Stratton. Caitlin Slattery. Lauren Elizabeth McGuigan. Scott Robert Dobby. So thank you, everyone. The, I have just a couple of quick announcements. First, if you could, there's another ceremony in here right after our event is over. So if you can help us by uh, taking the trash with you to the garbage cans, that would be really helpful for getting ready for the next event. One of the, uh, one of the great privileges of being, we, we're typically the largest major at Duke Economics. And one of the great privileges is that we get to have our ceremony here in Cameron, which is well known for being one of the loudest uh, basketball hall stadiums in the, in the world. And so I want to close the ceremony today by asking you to give us two more Cameron-worthy cheers. The first for our wonderful EcoTeach staff and department staff who not only put together this, this large event, but basically help our, help our students throughout the year to, to make their way through our curriculum and make their way through our programs. So a big round of applause, Cameron-worthy for our staff. And finally, just one more Cameron Worthy cheer for our Duke Economics Class of 2014. Thank you, everyone.